name of Te Uru Flavel. Tēnā Mr Speaker, kia ora tātou katoa. My question is to the Minister of Internal Affairs and asks, is he concerned that pub charity Chief Executive Martin Chair has publicly declared that pub charity was using gaming machine money to fight the gambling, gambling harm reduction amendment bill? And what actions has the Department of Internal Affairs taken to enforce its direction that net proceeds were not to be used for lobbying? Mr Speaker. Uh, Honourable Tris, uh, Chris Tremaine. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In answer to the members' uh, question, I have not heard those particular comments, but I am concerned about the misuse of gaming machine money and am aware that some gaming societies may have been using net proceeds to support lobbying activities. The actions taken by the Department are operational matters for the Chief Executive, but, but I am advised that, that, that... Do you want to hear the answer to the question or not? But I am advised that the Department has written Order. to all gaming machine societies to remind them that gaming proceeds cannot be used for lobbying. I am also aware that in the case of pub charity, the Department has been assured that all activities relating to, gam to the Gambling Harm Reduction Bill are being funded by other sources and not from gaming proceeds. Mr Speaker, I am confident that should any of the evidence emerge that this is not the case, that the Department would take the matter further. Supplementary, Supplementary to your off level. Does the Minister accept Mr Chair's view that the problem is, quote, squarely at the feet of the DIA, uh, which has been ineffective in enforcing some of the exposed uh, rorts, end of quote, and if not, what role does the government play in alerting the government to potential risks associated with deals such as that considered with Sky City, in which additional pokey machines, gambling tables and an extension of the gambling licence are up for discussion? Honourable Speaker. Chris Tremaine. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I do not accept that the Department is to blame for the problem. I believe that uh, where non-compliance is a problem, that this lies squarely at the feet of the societies concerned. However, I do believe that there are wider issues in the Class 4 sector which need to be addressed to enhance the compliance regime. This is why the Government will be paying close attention to the Gambling Harm Reduction Bill and to the Select Committee process to inform our actions going forward. Uh, Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, is he satisfied that New Zealand's gaming laws are not for sale to lobbyists? <laughs> yes. Honourable Trips Tremaine, yes. David Shearer. Is it his intention to apply a similar standard, i.e. net proceeds are not to be used for lobbying purposes to Sky City, who have successfully lobbied the Prime Minister for preferential gambling arrangements? Honourable Chris Tremaine. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. This... Order, order, order. Points of order will be heard in silence. The primary question that's at, uh, to be answered here deals with Class 4 gambling. The regime that's uh, uh, applied to casinos, Mr Speaker, is a totally different regime and not, not applicable to the, to the main question. Speaking to the point of order, Mr Speaker. to the point of order, uh, the Honourable Trevor Mr. Mallard. Mr Speaker, I, th I think there are, there are two points that can be made which, uh, which will mean that you'll rule out the uh, minister. I see the minister's getting advice from the maestro at the moment, Mr Speaker. <laughs> um, uh, Mr., Mr., Mr Speaker, uh, there, are there are two points that should be made. Uh, order. There are two points that should be made there, sir. One is that the answer to the question that the Minister gave and answered the primary question was very wide and certainly allowed uh, that supplementary. The second one, sir, is that asking whether or not rules which apply to one class of gambling should be applied to another is also with an order. Well, um, the primary question uh, principally was uh, to the Minister of uh, Internal Affairs, and that's where his responsibility actually lays. His, his responsibility is managing and affirming the way in which the Department of Internal Affairs uh, do operate, and I regard that this supplementary by the Leader of the Opposition has stepped wide or of that. Point of order, uh, Mr Speaker, I spoke directly to that Minister and his responsibilities. I was simply giving the, ex the example of the way that Sky City has used the, uh, the, its proceeds to lobby for the Prime Minister. Speaking further to the point of order, sir. Honourable Trevor Mallard. This Minister 
is responsible for the gaming legislation um, that, are, that applies both to Pokey Trusts and to Sky City. And asking him whether or not he is going to be consistent between those classes of gaming is certainly a matter absolutely for his responsibility. Could the Leader of the Opposition, uh, sorry, uh, Speaking to Honourable point. Jerry Brownlee? Mr Speaker, I do think you need to, as you have already uh, directed the House, go back to the primary question. It talks about pub charity Chief Executive Martin Chia, and then asks for comment mm. on uh, his publicly declared statements, etc. Uh, now that's a very, very specific uh, primary question. They got very, very specific answers, and mm. to try and widen it uh, through other supplementaries, I think, is is pushing too far. Speaker, sorry, Mr. Speaker, speak further to that because I'll, I'll hear, I'll hear the an important member. point that the that the leader of the house makes, sir. But it, it has always been mm. the tradition in this house that supplementaries are based on questions, further supplementary questions, and all answers that ministers give. And if we can't do a supplementary based on an answer, if the minister extends it wider as he did, mm. and there's no doubt that he, d he, he did that, sir, uh, then it was a very long mm. answer, uh, Mr Speaker, then, then the whole purpose of questions falls apart. Yes, I, I think, members, for the contribution, um, I, I, I'm just a little concerned that uh, if, uh, if, if we do step wide of the mark, that doesn't continue to keep opening up the subject wider and wider. And I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition to restate his question. Point of order, point of order, Mr. Point, well, Speaker. Point Mr. of order, Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, I just want to, uh, with regard to the ruling you've just made, refer you to Speaker's ruling 169 bar 7, uh, which says, if a minister in an oral answer to a question adds something more than was sought, the additional material could be the basis for a supplementary question. That seems to be directly contradictory to what you've just said. No, well, I, what I've just said is I want to hear the Leader of the Opposition restate the question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Appreciate that. Is it his intention to apply a similar standard, i.e. net proceeds are not to be used for lobbying purposes, to Sky City, who have successfully lobbied the Prime Minister well, for, for preferential gambling well, the, arrangements? Well, the second part of the question is an opinion. Yeah. And so the first part of the question is in order, and I will ask the Minister to respond to the first part of the question. Yeah. Uh, point of order. Mr Speaker, there have been multiple press statements, claims by the Prime Minister in the election campaign of a change for Sky City. For you to say that's an opinion and not a fact is just wrong. I, I'll ask the Minister. Uh, uh, Honourable Jerry Br uh, Brownlee. Yeah, Mr Speaker, I just want to... Order! I just want to contribute by saying that I think you are right to say that there were two parts to that question. Yeah. Uh, the first part is a very straightforward question, I think relatively easily answered by the Minister, but the second part is a supposition that can't be reached. Uh, we're talking about yeah. a public company. Public companies do all sorts of things, including inviting people to corporate boxes to watch rugby. <laughs> um, uh, no, Chris, Honourable Chris Tremaine. Uh, Mr Speaker, I intend to apply the law consistently. And uh, into the second part of the member's question, I uh, reject his assertion. You reject the assertion. Supplementary to your level. Order, 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 order. Can the House please come to order? I'm accepting a supplementary question from to your level. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to the minister, does he agree with the Lion Foundation? that legislative reform is necessary to address some of the problems in the charitable gaming sector and increase the returns to the community? And if so, what is his response to their recommendation uh, that a minimum of 80% of the net proceeds raised in a territorial authority of council district must be granted to applicants in that same territorial authority or district? Honourable Chris Tremaine. Mr Speaker, thank you. Uh, Again, I have not heard those exact comments, but, but I agree that there are problems in the charitable sector. I agree that there are problems in the charitable sector, and action of some kind is necessary. The government will be playing, paying close attention to the submissions made to the Select Committee and on this bill to inform the actions we take in response to this issue. I am aware that the bill seeks to return proceeds to the communities from which they are raised 
and I am sure the Select Committee will hear many interesting submissions in this regard. Question number two in the name of David Shearer.